This is video history from the J. Bay Jacobs Library for the History of Obstetrics and Gynecology, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. My guest this afternoon, at the end of April in the year 2001, is Dr. Gloria Sarto. Dr. Sarto, as we will hear, has been a number of places, but is currently Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the University of Wisconsin Medical School in Madison. Gloria, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. We'd like to start out by uh, beginning at the beginning, if you will. So you know, tell us where you were born and where you grew up and any of the exciting things that happened. Sure. I was uh, born in Racine, Wisconsin, and uh, to uh, parents that were newly immigrated. From where? Uh, one from Italy, and uh, my dad from Naples, and my mother from uh, Amsterdam, Holland. Uh, so the Sarto is Italian. Sarto is Italian. Italian. And uh, so grew up in Racine, and uh, uh, went to all of my undergraduate uh, school there, except we did uh, move for a short time uh, to the country, and I attended a two-room country school. This is in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, Wisconsin. in Franksville, Wisconsin. Um, and went to a two-room country school through eighth grade. And then went mm -hmm. back to Racine. And then went to Racine Hornock High School. And, and then, then following, you went, following that... Did I, you go directly to university? Uh, no. You sounded as if you might not have. No. Following that, I had thought about being a physician when I was young. And then when... Um, I graduated from high school, uh, there were insufficient funds to send me to mm -hmm. a university. And uh, so I went to a three-year nursing school at St. Luke's in Racine, Racine. Wisconsin. And um, I finished there, and with sort of with the intent of, uh, if I wasn't gonna go to become a physician, with the intent of becoming mm -hmm. an instructor, at least in nursing. But then when I was getting some credits toward that. I switched back to wanting to go into medicine, so I did that. And I used nursing uh, primarily to earn my way through uh, pre-med. I worked as a labor and delivery room nurse, as a matter of fact. Really? And, and pre-med was where? In, uh, uh, sort of in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. I did it at the UUW Extension. Mm -hmm. It was then, now it's, a, it's another Milwaukee site and uh, finished there and then went to Madison for the rest. I had to do about two years in Madison uh, and then uh, entered medical school mm -hmm. there. Well, who, was the, uh, who was your chairman of obstetrics and gynecology well, when you were in uh, medical school in Madison? Uh, the chair originally when I would have first started was Ralph Campbell, who mm -hmm. was president, was of, the president of the college at the time. Right. And, uh, and then he stepped down as chair and uh, Ben Peckham mm -hmm. then took it, uh, came to Madison from Northwestern. Mm -hmm. And then he was the chair as I was entering my senior year. And chair for a very long time, was yes. he not? Yes, mm -hmm. he was a great, mm -hmm. wonderful person. Uh, and then I went off to an internship. Uh, you know, that was when we were doing general internships, mm -hmm. and I did that at the Cleveland Met Metropolitan General, mm -hmm. then called Cuyahoga County. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, and then I was there and I uh, was debating uh, OBGYN and uh, pediatric surgery, as a matter of oh. fact. And um, Ben Peckham called and said, you know, you got to make up your mind. <laughs> and so he, and he had a spot for me in Madison. And so I, I went back to the University of Wisconsin in Madison and mm -hmm. had my residency with Ben, a four-year residency. Four years. Mm -hmm. And it was wonderful. I mean, uh, uh, I was the first woman to be admitted into that residency, though there was a woman on the faculty, Madeline Thornton was there. Mm -hmm. But I was the first woman, and uh, when Ben uh, took me as a resident, he told me he was going to treat me just like one of the boys. And I said, well, you <laughs> do <he> that. <laughs> you do that, and we'll be, <laughs> that'll be great. And so it was really wonderful. And then I had offers to go into private practice after my residency, but uh, I wanted to stay in academia. Mm. And uh, so I did that. And then while I was uh, a junior faculty person, um, John Opitz, who is a pediatric dysmorphologist, mm -hmm. uh, wanted me to maybe look at Turner syndrome patients. 
And uh, to perhaps back then they were wondering whether or not the gonadal streaks would undergo mm -hmm. neoplastic change. Mm -hmm. We know now mm -hmm. that's not the case. Uh, but I thought if I was going to do that, I'd learn a little bit mm -hmm. about Turner syndrome patients. Started taking some courses, and I ended up getting my PhD in medical genetics. Mm -hmm. I was an associate Good professor in the school, and I remember that so well because uh, they said I perhaps couldn't be an associate professor and get a PhD. And uh, Ben Peckham said, well, that's, that's we'll baloney. Yeah. <laughs> it will fix it. <laughs> so up the hill we went, and, and we got it mm -hmm. fixed. It's, it's <coughs> at least fair at this point probably to say, what year was that? Uh, that was, uh, I got my Ph.D. in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was then the first person to do amniocentesis and prenatal genetic diagnosis in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, I, I did it all in my own laboratory. Mm -hmm. And um, so I you know, did the amnios, drew the cells, made the diagnosis, and then did determinations if, uh, if it was indicated. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you know, Ben was just a wonderful mentor for Indeed. me. Indeed. He, uh, you know, he just took me places, Ben and Anna, mm -hmm. and, and um, <coughs> so they were really great people and he really helped me a lot. We do, do I think all of us remember in your career that you were one of the individuals who helped to promote the role of women in obstetrics and gynecology and of course <coughs> part of that came from example, but what are some of the other things that uh, you well, did to encourage those who came I, along behind you. I, um, when I was chair at the University of New Mexico, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, um, two thirds of my faculty were women, and uh, all except one on a tenure track. Mm -hmm. And so I was very pleased to be able to recruit women and to assist them in getting their promotions and getting them in the right places at the right time, just as Ben <coughs> had done with mm -hmm. me. Uh, and so I um, have been very, felt very strongly about that. Also, uh, at that time, I had 75% of my residents were women. And I suppose they came, more women came, because they saw more women mm -hmm. teaching. And so uh, that was, uh, it, it's, it's nice, and now, obviously, I'm in a position as uh, co-director of the Center for Women's mm -hmm. Health at the University of Wisconsin. I am sort of in a leadership position there, uh, trying to advance <coughs> women in academia there, and 25% uh, time in the dean's office now just for that purpose. And so I, I am having a, a wonderful time, and it, it, you get, as you know, you get to a place in, in your own career where you can do those sorts of things, mm -hmm. uh, where you can help You don't people. have to establish yourself anymore. That's no, right. you know, you, you get, and so it's <coughs> wonderful because, you know, wherever you go, you can mm -hmm. help someone along the way. I was just talking with Ben Curret, who was a mm -hmm. Wisconsin resident, and he and I were residents together. His daughter Miriam is a surgeon, and I'm also active in the American College of Surgeons, so. I got her on a couple mm -hmm. of committees, mm -hmm. and he just was mm -hmm. telling me thanks out here, which was nice. What years were you at uh, New Mexico? I think most of us will remember you as uh, that being your primary base for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I moved from Wisconsin to Northwestern in 76, and I was at Northwestern from 76 until 83. And then I was back in the Wisconsin system just for a short time. So then I moved to New Mexico in 1986. And um, that's where I really sort of built a department. It, it had been without a chair for quite a long time, and, and so I was uh, fortunate to get what I needed to build it. And um, it was hard to leave it mm -hmm. after well, 10 years. Well, you really did, because I think most of us <laughs> who didn't know you in Wisconsin days associate you with having been at New Mexico almost mm -hmm. forever. Yeah, and yeah, it, and it was great. And my, my career, too, in, in OBGYN has just been marvelous, I think. I've, you know, I've enjoyed being an obstetrician gynecologist, and, and uh, I've been able to do a lot of things. It was fun going back to Wisconsin. I happened to give a talk at some senior community place, and 
I don't know how many of my own patients Patient showed up, up with their pictures with their grandchildren. Yeah. And so it was really kind of fun to be able to go back now and still be uh, so involved with, uh, with, it was OBGYN and with women's health in hmm. general. Did you stay with some of the genetic research in uh, your years yeah, in New I Mexico? Yes, I did. When I first went down there, I couldn't. I was so busy getting uh, working clinically mm -hmm. because I was covering cancer and covering everything until I recruited folks. But then I was able to set up my lab, and uh, we were doing the uh, fluorescence and cyto hybridization technology uh, to try to separate fetal cells from maternal circulation and also use fish on amniotic fluid cells. And we were able to develop a very, very rapid fish uh, technique uh, for which uh, we have a patent. And the uh, University of New Mexico has got that. And so that was, uh, I've been able to do that. Now back at Wisconsin, I still teach some of it. I just taught in the first year uh, class uh, a bit about Turner syndrome and things like that, but I'm not doing as much mm -hmm. in genetics. Do you think the uh, battle for adequate numbers of women practitioners in OBGYN has been won? won. Has been won? Won. I think that the numbers entering uh, and entering into medical school, I think entering into OBGYN uh, has pretty much, I think everyone looks at our discipline as an example mm -hmm. because in in, in the American College of Surgeons are having a hard time getting women in the surgical specialties and they all say, well, it's because of the hours. When they say, well, look at With the OB. hours in, mm -hmm. in OBGYN. So I think our discipline has been really quite, quite successful and, and perhaps receptive to women. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think uh, we're there. I think women, are women who are looking for OBGYNs are still looking for women. I don't know that there are sufficient numbers because the women obstetrician gynecologists are working extremely hard. They. Yeah. So I'm not sure yeah. that. But you know, uh, since you've done the manpower stuff, you know, it's it's different now. I think the work the work hours are different for men and women. Mm -hmm. They are. And um, I think the men who are coming out of residencies now are. Wonderful. I had some wonderful men in my program in New Mexico, and I think they treated patients beautifully. And I think partly because they saw uh, the women mentors, teachers, uh, in their relationships, I think they just sort of worked the same way. So I, I don't know. Uh, I still think there's a place uh, for men. We hope so. <laughs> yeah. I no, really do. Those of us who've been at meetings with you have. Uh, seen your children at more than one meeting over the years. Tell us uh, in the few moments we have left about the children. Well, they're, they're wonderful. Uh, Brittany, who uh, was adopted from the International Mission of Hope, uh, is now 12, and she's doing very well. Um, and uh, Brooke, who is uh, 10, uh, from Lima, uh, Peru. Um, and uh, the two youngest uh, from China, from different provinces, are also doing well. They're six and five now. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting because uh, um, one was uh, sort of left in a park, uh, and uh, the, the other one was left next to a police station. Yeah. In China? In China. China. Yeah. So that's. Well, uh, it's been f it's been fun for those of us who know you to <laughs> see at least the older ones <laughs> well, it's been fun grow for up me grow too. up I'm over it. it's busy for you and I've been really busy mm -hmm. but uh, they're great and uh, they're really quite mm -hmm. healthy and doing quite well in school mm -hmm. given the fact that uh, we have no health records on them mm -hmm. we've been very fortunate mm -hmm. Gloria it's been great to know you over the years and mm -hmm. I think we all recognize your contributions to the increased increased and increasing role of women in the specialty. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was very nice. Thank you. You have a picture of the kids? Huh? Yeah, you gotta go.